Hello everyone! Today we have great, long, expanded documentaries on streaming services that tell everything we would want to know about some of the most famous American serial killers. Back in the 1980s, the most common format for these stories were made for television movies. The one I'm covering today is from 1986 and it is about the fascinating case of serial killer Ted Bundy. I am Torstein from Cinema Terror and this is The Deliberate Stranger. It's strange, interesting and a bit uncomfortable to look back at the way serial killers were treated during the 1970s and especially the 1980s. The media made some of the worst men in society famous by covering every gruesome little detail of their murders and nearly fighting amongst each other to come up with nicknames that would stick to them. One of the most famous names from this time, which still can cause fear today, over 30 years after his death, was Ted Bundy. A man that looked like an intelligent, kind, handsome person. What the people close to him did not know at the time was that Bundy had a darker side that he was unable to control. He was not as smart as people made him out to be, and thankfully he slipped up and made mistakes that would get him caught. The story didn't end there, as he was able to escape from prison not once but twice, before ending up being sentenced to the death penalty in one of the biggest media craze of a court case we have seen to date. Before his death penalty was put into effect in 1989, Nearly 10 years after being sentenced, Bundy finally admitted to being responsible for a total of 30 murders, although it is not unlikely that the number could be even higher. While he was put to death by an electrical chair, hundreds of people stood outside the prison, bizarrely celebrating Ted Bundy's death all day, evening and night, with the media yet again covering every step of it. Six years after his incarceration, while he was still alive in jail and appealing his death sentence, a made-for-TV movie came out on NBC based on the book Bundy, The Deliberate Stranger from 1980 by news reporter Richard W. Larson. How in the world can I get through 90 days of diagnostic evaluation without hearing from you? They'll certify me crazy just because my girl won't answer my letters, won't take my calls. If it's because you talked to the police, I forgive you. I forgive you anything. The Deliberate Stranger is a three hour long two part movie that now feels a bit tame and prematurely made. This was created and premiered while Ted Bundy was still alive on death row, trying to appeal his case to the Supreme Court, which is a bit morally questionable, but that was the times I guess. They tried to tell a story not only about Ted Bundy and his horrible crimes, but also the story of those around the case, including his longtime girlfriend and the detectives that were trying to solve the murder cases. It does so in a very ordinary and TV way. There isn't any deep psychological dive into any of the characters, including Ted Bundy. It is instead a very straightforward retelling of the facts available at the time, with some creative liberties being taken. They also changed up the names of all of the victims, including his girlfriends, which I think is a respectable choice considering they were not, from what I believe, involved in the production of the film, and it was also made so few years after the real court case with emotional wounds still obviously not being healed. We go through Ted's story from when he was a young adult, just around the time when the first murders happened, and we follow him all the way until he receives his jail sentence. Most of the running time is made up of seeing the detectives and journalists sitting around talking about the case, basically telling the story directly to the audience instead of showing it. The violence is also mostly tame, and we rarely see Bundy doing his evil deeds during the three hours of running time. We do get a good performance by Mark Harmon as Ted Bundy, who earlier the same year had been named the sexiest man alive by People magazine. He does well in portraying the normal side, if you will, of Bundy, making him seem like an ordinary man in society. It shows how he did the terrible things that he did, but he never seems to attempt asking the questions of why. What's the reasoning for how he became so violent? What was wrong with him? And I guess that's a big frustrating part for me, as I feel the filmmakers should have been able to do more of that and also give the film more emotions instead of it being so case-focused. The lack of attention of those type of questions 
also gave Harmon little to work with when it came to the darker side of Bundy, as it is rarely displayed or explored in the movie. I also think it comes off a bit too calm and charming, as I do not see the same when I watch the real court tapes or interviews of Bundy. I see a scared man who tries to hide his true self, and has lost the shield he had hidden behind all of his adult life. Bundy would actually see an increase in fan letters after this movie premiered, which says something about the type of fame these guys would get during those days, and sadly maybe even today. Good luck with the trial, Ted. Thank you. <laughs> they also didn't touch upon the media craze as much as I think they should have. Much of the fascination of the Ted Bundy case does not come from the violence he committed by itself, but from the way society and media treated him. Because of his so-called charm and well-spoken nature, he got away with things that regular criminals would not dream about. And just like we want to know why a person would commit such horrible acts, I also think it's healthy to ask ourselves why we become obsessed with such individuals. That's the type of questions I personally want from a movie like this, and that's not what I got from The Deliberate Stranger. The supporting cast, and there's a lot of them, all do a good job in making the people they portray come to life. We see how Ted Bundy has affected them all, and it is handled well in a made-for-TV matter. I would have liked to spend more time with the women close to Bundy, and less time with the detectives and news reporters sitting around talking. While the majority of the film is straightforward, talky and a bit tame, the music by Gil Melin is more aggressive and noisy. It doesn't fit the film, and sounds like something he put together for what he believed the mood of the film would turn out to be, so instead of building up tension or atmosphere, it takes up too much space and focus. It's hard for me, I don't think I have to tell you this, to sit by and let other people run the show, particularly when the show concerns my life and my freedom. Just think, I'll get to be a real lawyer after all. In a time where you have great documentaries and other movies on Bundy, The Deliberate Stranger feels a bit redundant. You could give it some break, since it was made before Bundy's appeal and final death would take place, but on the other hand, that was also their very own decision. In the end, The Deliberate Stranger is a decent mid-80s tale of the Ted Bundy case, and it is serviceable for people who like a good, safe TV crime drama. When it comes to those who are interested in learning more about Ted Bundy, then I would rather recommend checking out the documentaries, Conversations with a Killer from Netflix, and Falling for a Killer from Amazon. The Deliberate Stranger is a three hour long movie that feels long, even though it deals with a story that could be expanded into several more hours of material. A final little fun fact about the film is that it was shown on Norwegian television in 1989, with part one premiering the weekend before its execution and the second part the following week. This was a bit controversial here, and the excuse that was used was that it was scheduled before Bunty had been given his final execution date, which was obviously just bullshit. Alright, let's wrap this up. My final score for The Deliberate Stranger ends up on the alright middle of the road score of 2.5 out of 5. Have you seen The Deliberate Stranger? If so, what did you think of the film? What's your thoughts on the media's role in creating fame for violent people like Bundy? And what other movies or serial killers would you recommend more people check out? I also have a video on another late 80s made for TV movie called Manhunt Search for the Night Stalker that I would recommend taking a look at. I hope you find this review interesting, it does go a bit off the film itself at times, but I feel that's unavoidable when it comes to stuff like this. Take care of yourself and others, and I'll see you next time here on Cinema Terror. Thank you.